Hello everyone, welcome back. KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. I have here today the Uniden SDS100 True IQ handheld scanner, probably one of the most advanced scanners you can get this day and age. And there might be ones that are more than this, but I'm gonna show you in this video first, just a quick unboxing and the features that are on the product description on the website, because it'll be way too long to put all this in one video. But man, some of the stuff this does is incredible. And I borrowed this from Gigaparts. Thanks to Gigaparts for letting me borrow it. But I've been asking for almost a year, even before last year's Huntsville Ham Fest in Alabama. I said, guys, when are you getting them? I guess COVID hit Uniden pretty hard. And over the last couple of years, their production went way down to like 30% at Uniden. Finally, Gigaparts gets a pallet of these and they said, well, you can let you borrow one, but you gotta make it quick because these things are gonna be gone. Now, I'd like to purchase one of these. Uh, right now, it's a little bit out of my uh, realm of purchasing with the funds, but maybe one day when they come back in stock, I'll get one. But at the time, uh, Ham Radio Outlet had a couple. They were gone. Gigaparts didn't have any. Amazon was out of stock. I finally got one. So I'm going to show you about this. Guys, this thing is pretty damn impressive, I got to say. There's a lot of things that this can do, will do, and uh, we're going to show you right now. So before I get started, a quick note to my sponsors, Ham Radio Prep, who sponsored my videos and my efforts. Thank you very much for sponsoring me. Guys, if you're interested in getting a Ham Radio license, Ham Radio Prep is by far the easiest way. Use the code ERIC20 on any course that you buy, you save 20%. ERIC20, save 20%, very simple. Ham Radio Prep makes it easy. You don't need a ham license for this. This is a scanner. Anybody can have this and listen without a license, but to talk on ham radio frequencies, you got to get a ham license. HamRadioPrep.com has all the info for that. So um, let me show you what's in here, okay? And a lot of people think that when you, well, what would I need a scanner for? That's a lot, of, a lot of people say police. This is the first thing they think of. Well, I just don't want to listen to police. I don't need a scanner. Guys, there's so much you can listen to on here. You can listen to ham radio. You can listen to public safety. You can listen to DOT, fire, EMS, aircraft, digital, trunking, uh, police, uh, uh, even stuff like people at Walmart that use uh, cell um, radios or, uh, you know, uh, local businesses, uh, government agencies, military, all kinds of stuff. You can listen, aircraft, on something like this. Simulcast from uh, rocket launches from the Kennedy Space Center, whatever. Okay, this is the SDS-100. And wow, this has some size to it. That is rather thick. I mean, that's... It's not heavy at all. Um, the battery is not in it. The battery weighs a little bit, but this has to be uh, like the, you know, it's got a nice size screen on here. It is bigger than any handheld ham radio I've ever used. Looks like it's got a huge wide open speaker in the front. This is IPX4 rated for dust uh, and, and elements and water splash proof. So it's not submersible, but out in the elements, as long as you have the rubber caps on, and the battery cover sealed and all that stuff on there that should be IPX4 rated, okay? Um, again, I, I really, you look at this, you think it's gonna be a brick. So this battery cover comes off like this. See, there's a gasket around here. There's where your SD card goes in the back. So it does come with an SD card. This is eight gigabyte, okay? Kind of like a SIM card holder here. Wow. There you go. There you go. Okay, there's your SIM card holder. So the, there's your memory card holder. So the battery, the battery is a 3.7 volt, 5,400 milliamp battery. It's own prior, you know, it's own design here. That goes like this. Okay, that's an interesting battery concept, the way they do that. Drop the box in, put this cover on, probably for the, there you go. Okay, still not heavy at all. Um, I'd have to say it's maybe a tiny, I, I, this probably weighs less than the UV5R with the uh, upgraded battery on there. I mean, this is, um, this is a Bridgecom GMRS radio and it's heavier than this unit in. Okay, that's, that's pretty interesting. Not heavy at all. Um, SMA female antenna connector on the top it does come with an antenna. Oh, look at that antenna. Nice and bulky. You did an antenna. It's got a, it's got a gasket on there, a, a 
a uh, O-ring on there as well. Okay, pretty cool. It's got your lanyard here, which will go around this little thing in the corner. What else we got? The belt clip. Cool thing about the belt clip, you don't have to screw it on. So it's go like this. Like that. There. All right, there's your belt clip. Here is your USB cable and the uh, wall wart adapter. So I guess the USB cable for charging this thing. Yeah. So that USB cable, there's two USB ports on the front, on the side. That USB on the bottom is a, I forget what they call those, USB-B, not a micro USB. That's for the charge here, charges of USB. So it can be charged out in a field, a battery bank or a solar panel or whatever. Then you have the micro USB up here, probably for programming as well. So we're not going to get into programming this right this second, okay, or showing you what to do with it. But I'm going to show you all the different things that this does on the website. I'm going to have to read from the computer because there's just so much stuff here that you can do. This does have a headphone jack up top, so you can use this for earpiece if you want to keep this on and you're at a race or something or you're at an air, uh, air show or, or an airplane event or uh, you want to be covert ops, you know, you can plug it at the top there. It doesn't come with one. You can plug it in and also you can use an external GPS with this, which is not included. Use a GPS for location-based frequency finding uh, if you're in the area, kind of like my 885 Bear Tracker CB slash hybrid scanner in the truck. It's got a GPS that came with it and I can actually drive through town and as an update for that, that scanner is like flawless as far as I'm concerned. No matter what county I go through, it'll automatically pull up and I can listen to police, fire, EMS, and DOT uh, and more. Sometimes things come in on the DOT with the scanner that's built in based on GPS. I never have to program anything or find out what location I'm in and what frequencies are. This will operate the same way based on zip code or if you buy the external uh, GPS and plug it in, you can do that. Okay, the SDS100 is also the first scanner that allows you to decide what to display, where, and in what color. Custom fields put the information important to you right where you need it. So as far as main overviews, the Home Patrol database includes all known radio systems in the US and Canada. The database is updatable with the Sentinel software and you didn't updates the main database weekly. As I said, water resistant IPX4 that's resistant to dust and water damage caused by splashing water from any direction, given that all the jack covers are in place. Customizable color display, true IQ receiver, and that's cool. An IQ receiver captures the complete signal waveform in three dimensions, allowing for improved digital error correction and signal recovery. Location-based scanning, as I talked about the GPS that you can set or with the zip code in the radio to search the database based on your zip code. You scan for favorites. Micro SD card, again, has uh, eight gigabytes included in there, up to 32 gigabytes supported. And that's also for recording audio sessions, profiles, all your settings, so that you can use the, um, the, uh, the profile uh, startup where you can hold the zero through nine key and set up individual profiles as you turn the radio on and hold, say, five, that may load up everything that's in police in this area, in this zip code, whatever. But all that gets stored on the SD card and um, audio as well. GPS compatible, as I said. Range control lets you set how far out your current location that the scanner will search for channels in the favorites and the database. So if you don't want to hear 50 miles of a county, you can listen to just five miles of a county based on your location. Trunk Tracker X operation scans APCO 25 Phase 1 and Phase 2, X2 TDMA, Motorola, EDAX, and LTR trunk systems, as well as conventional analog and P25 digital channels. Optional upgrades add multiple types of NXDN and DMR trunking, as well as EDAX Pro Voice decoding. This thing will decode a, a slice of bread that's been spray painted red and put in a wet paper bag. I mean, this thing will tell you what it is. <laughs> Um, instant replay again up to four minutes of the most recent transmissions audio recording uh, on the SD card Cu custom alerts so you can program your scanner to alert when you receive a channel or unit ID a close call hit an ID is transmitted with an emergency alert or a tone out hit and you can do that with nine different tone patterns 
15 volume settings, seven colors, and three flash patterns. So you can make it flash a different pattern with a different uh, volume setting, a different color, and a different tone pattern for something that you want to hear. Maybe it's a frequency that's not often used, but when you hear somebody on there, you want that thing to alert you. Um, and that's a multicolor alert with uh, seven different colors. Trunking discovery. So monitor system traffic on a trunk radio system to find unknown IDs and automatically records audio from and logs new channels for later review and identification. Conventional discovery, scan by service types. If you just want police, you just want fire, you just want DOT, you just want air, you just want ham radio, scan that. System channel number tagging, startup configuration, as I said. So um, everything starts up the way you want it, holding up just uh, holding the zero through nine key depending on how you set it up. Close call RF capture technology lets you set the scanner so it detects and provides information about nearby radio transmissions. Close call do not disturb checks for close call activity in between channel reception so active channels are not interrupted. Broadcast screen, fire tone out, standby, tone search, PC programming. Priority and priority with DND scan, priority ID scan, intermediate frequency exchange, individual channel volume offset, Configurable band defaults for AM, FM, narrow FM, wide FM, or I don't know what FMB is for 31 different bands. Repeater find. So it allows the scanner to try to switch to the repeater frequency input. So if you have somebody transmitting to a repeater, you want to hear the person transmitting on the input side. They can try to find that automatically. Data naming, adjustable scan, search, delay, resume. Everybody always asks me about radios. Will this scan? This thing will scan till your head falls off. I mean, this thing can scan different types, different frequencies, different favorite lists, different modes, different bands. I mean, this thing will scan however you want it to scan. Duplicate input alert, data naming, quick keys, search of voids, 10 custom searches, search with scan operation, three search keys, quick search, same weather priority alert. That's uh, SAME from the NOAA channel. And that is basically, so uh, basically check out my video on the same weather alerts with my Midland weather radio. And that'll explain how that works. You can look up SAME alert and it'll give you an idea. That's not just a regular weather alert. It goes by, by location. Uh, Built-in battery charger, so it charges the rechargeable battery uh, via USB port. So that's good for solar panels, portable solar panels, battery banks, car chargers. Uh, you know, we can charge a lot of different ways. Look at the frequencies here, okay? So all the way down to 25 megahertz, okay? And then you can go, uh, you know, the entire CB band on AM only, not on sideband. Uh, business and forest products, 10 meter amateur band on FM only, not sideband. VHF low band, which is something I work with uh, at work in the 47 megahertz. Um, six meter amateur band, VHF TV broadcast. This will only listen to TV broadcast at analog, not digital. And uh, check out my videos on the over there HDTV digital uh, TV broadcast. Uh, five years now since I've paid for cable and I'm still loving it. Inner system and astronomy, VHF TV broadcast five through six, FM broadcast, commercial aircraft, military land mobile, two meter amateur band, military land mobile, VHF high band, federal government, TV broadcast, 220 on narrow FM, uh, UHF aircraft, trunked military band, miscellaneous, that's, you know, cabs and stuff like that, federal government band, 70 centimeter UHF, all the way up to uh, public service band up in the 800s, the 900s, and even 1.2 gigahertz to, to 1300. That's the 25 centimeter amateur band. Okay. Pretty neat stuff. This thing will do a lot. Uh, and again, right here, although TV bands are listed, the scanner cannot decode digital TV audio. But if you look at this here on this website, this here, the SDS 200 is the same thing, but in a base mobile type scanner, not a handheld. So if you're interested in that for 50 more dollars, you can get something like that. All right, so this is part one. Normally, I don't do just an inf informational unboxing video. There's just way too much to talk about to, you know, introduce this unit before I make a video about the operation. Now, the thing is, this is map price. I think they call it map price or iron price, whatever. This is six forty nine at the time of this video, and the market has set that it will not allow this to be set. You, you can't start marketing these at your radio store for five hundred dollars new. You need to set the price. So the name of the game here is not who's got it priced cheaper, but who's got it in stock because Gigaparts did say, listen, we'll let you borrow this. We need it back ASAP. 
because this palette is probably the last palette we're going to get for a long time. So they want to make sure this gets sold. Uh, and this will probably be a uh, open box or possibly uh, uh, maybe I buy it. I'm not sure. If, if I really do want to buy it, but after buying that uh, ID52, I don't think I have the money to buy this right now. So, uh, But if I had time to play more, I could make weekly videos on this thing. So anyways, let me know in the comments here what you want to see about this scanner and what interests you about it. Um, because I want to be able to touch on a couple things that you're interested in if you're looking to get into a scanner like this. The scanner market will be around forever. This isn't a fad. Scanners have come a long way since when I was a kid with a Radio Shack. I think it was a Pro 85, I think it was. And that did, you know, 29 to 512 megahertz, analog only, one channel only. There was no cool, you know, IQ technology or lithium ion. I used double A's, you know, it didn't have GPS or programming. You entered the stuff in manually. Look where this has come now. You pop a computer card or an SD card in your computer and away you go. So let me know what you think about this. Part two is coming up. 7-3. This is KJ4YZI.